Welcome everyone to another Star Wars Jolder Public video and for this video we're going to be doing another pack opening of the new uh, Dread Warlord Cartel pack which was just released today. Very quickly before we get into it you guys might notice my voice sounds a little bit weird. I am once again sick which sucks. It's kind of a mix of allergies and a viral or something but uh, I did want to make this pack opening video because there's some very interesting changes to talk about. And um, the very first thing you might notice when you jump into the cartel market is there are changes made to the cartel packs. If you jump into the description of the individual cartel pack, it now tells you that you are getting three items per cartel pack. And uh, the way they've described it is a little bit confusing. The real um, kind of you take away all the fluff, the bottom line is you're now getting three items per cartel pack. One item is going to be a new pack item. The other item is going to be either a Grand Chance Cube or it's an already open Grand Chance Cube, if you know what I mean. So basically the thing is, it's going to draw randomly for the from the cartel market and just give you an item. So I guess it's kind of opening the Grand, Grand Chance Cube for us. And then the third item can once again either be a Grand Chance Cube or it's going to be an item drawn randomly from the cartel market, but it's restricted to only bronze or silver rarity. So you don't really have a chance of getting a gold armor set or anything. Uh, not a big deal because Grand Chance Cubes don't really give you gold stuff anyway. Mostly you're just getting silver and bronze stuff. And um, there's some very obvious obvious issues with those changes. The first one being not all of us open Grand Chance Cubes. A lot of us sell them because they do sell for around 800 to 900,000 credits depending on your server. Which is a lot of credits and it can often make Hyper Crates kind of worth it to open. Because you can open it, hope for some of the good gold stuff and then sell the Grand Chance Cubes and still get a lot of value out of it. But the fact that they're opening Grand Chance Cubes already for us means that they're kind of reducing uh, the value and how much you get out of it. So we're going to open this uh, Hyper Crate and see whether it's worth it. But the second thing you might notice is that the Hyper Crate now costs 5,800 Quartel Coins. And usually in the first week when Byra releases a new pack, they give it to us for like 4,400. Which was kind of a shady thing to do because Bioware said when they made the changes to Cartel Packs, when they announced it, they said they weren't going to in, uh, increase the price of Hyper Crates. But technically by taking away a sale that's always been there, they have increased the prices. Uh, so that's just my take on it. That was kind of a shady thing. They should have let us know that um, that sale wasn't going to be there. And it just kind of compounds with the fact that I don't think these changes are going to be particularly good. In case you're wondering whether Grand Chance Cubes will drop out of this and stuff, uh, I was looking at the Reddit forums and people were saying you only get around 3 to 5 Grand Chance Cubes, which kind of sucks. But we're going to open this Hypercrate and see just how many we can pull out. But yeah, I'm not a big fan of the changes right now. And uh, I'm just hoping that maybe they did something, improve the RNG or whatever. In terms of the, uh, we'll also evaluate what the items in the pack are and how good they are. But we'll just see what ends up popping out of here first. And then obviously I'm going to preview the mounts and the decorations at the end of this video. So as you guys can see, we're getting just random cartel market stuff. Because it's already drawing from the cartel market and giving us the items that you normally would get if you just opened the Grand Chance Cube. We have the Morlinger mount, a reusable Jawagram. And then here we have the Inferno Devour. Um... It's a really nice mount, honestly, and I'm going to preview it at the end of this video and we'll see how it looks when you run around in it, but it's a very nice mount. So that was a pretty, they did pretty good with that. And here's a really exciting item, the Tithe Font of Sacrifice. I saw this image on Delphi, it looked really nice, and actually I'm really surprised it's silver rarity. I can't believe that actually. I thought for sure that it's going to be a gold decoration. If anything was worthy of being a gold decoration, it's this one. I mean, it's a centerpiece, it's got some really nice fire animations, it's got skulls and stuff, and I'll show it off at the end. But it's a really, really nice one. So super surprised that that's silver. Excuse my voice, I'm sorry if my voice cracks and stuff. Um, here we have the Phantom Break. This is also a really nice pet. It's not just a lame reskin like we're used to seeing, but it actually glows and stuff. And once again, I'll show that later. Uh, there was one that was similar to that on the cartel market. It's called the Ethereal Rackling or something, which is just a small mini rackle. But that was also really nice. I actually bought that for my character because it looked really cool. And here we go. We have two crappy bronze mounts, but we have the deactivated IOCAF decoration. See, that's the problem. You know, none of these mounts are ever going to be worth the 800 or 900,000 credits that you could have sold a Grand Chance Cube for. And here we got our first Grand Chance Cube, like five packs in. Um, another Inferno Devour, and then just a random bronze pet. <clears throat> And if you're wondering why Bioware decided to make those changes, uh, they did say it was because they wanted cartel packs to feel more rewarding. But uh, as anyone could have guessed, it, it still doesn't feel very rewarding at all. 
Here we have the Vengeance Unsealed lightsaber, probably one of the most underrated lightsabers in the game. It's a really nice one. It's got the really cool curved feature of like Count Dooku's lightsaber. It's got a nice rotating crystal. Honestly, go to your respective servers and check the price of that on the GTN. You might find a very good deal. You never know. You might actually end up liking that lightsaber. It's one of my favorites. We have a few more decorations here. Another deactivated droid. Um... Ugh, the Fearless Retaliator saber style. See, that's, that's such crap. I mean, I, I, ugh. Um, and then Iocath Computer Bank, which, once again, they look like that was a centerpiece as well. But um, we'll preview all of that later. We have the Distinguished Wardens. This one, I'm not, I'm not a fan of it, honestly. Um, it's, it's not a very nice armor set. It's kind of like two lock cord reskinny, but not really. But it's just, nah. Uh, the Iocath Arches, another centerpiece decoration. That's very interesting. And then we have um, armor sets. That's the one good thing. I mean, it gives you complete armor sets. It's just usually those armor sets are bronze and they only like sell on the GTN for like 100, 200k. Here we have the Fashion Regen and then the uh, Chem Lizard. See, there's not much to say when you open these cartel packs. I mean, it's just like, yeah, random cartel market item, random cartel market item. Here's something I don't like at all. The Uniform Deep Blue Die Module. Why is Bioware putting die modules in these cartel packs? I mean, like, in what world do you think anyone's going to use that die, honestly? Ah, here we go. Our first gold item. We have the Gifted Shadow Supplementary. Ah, I was hoping for the upper. Uh, this armor set overall is decent. The supplementary is okay. I mean, it gives you that helmet, but uh, the upper body armor is the real jackpot item from that armor set. And what's really interesting is hyper crates have gone up in price now. Before, you could pick up a hyper crate for around 25 million. Now, you can't really find one for under 30 million. Oh, here we go. We have another die module. Come on. How many die modules are you going to give us? And the turret simulator was a pretty nice item, though. That was just recently on the cartel market for quite an expensive price. And another die module. Yeah, not very rewarding, by the way. If your goal was to make cartel packs feel rewarding, uh, not really. Giving us die modules over and over again, it's not going to do the trick. I forgot what I was saying earlier. Um, <laughs> here we go. We got some new armor sets. We got the Imperial Hutball uniform. Another Distinguished Warden. And here we go, our second gold item. Uh, the Tithian Disciple Supplementary. There we go. That, the Tithian Disciple is a really nice armor set. Uh, it's quite simple, but um, it's got that really good rustic feel, and obviously it's based off of the uh, God of War himself, which is really cool. And the supplementary has a really nice helmet. More crap. Another die module, but here we go. The classic Despot's armor set's not bad. Yeah, I, I, maybe I was saying this earlier. Uh, the armor, the fact that it gives you full armor sets is pretty cool. That was probably one of the only good things about Grand Chance Cubes. Uh, the, also, another good thing about... Um, here we go, another really good armor set. The Mandalorian Seeker is a really nice Mandalorian armor set. Uh, we have another die module, and then the Inferno Devourer again. Um, but yeah, full armor sets is cool. And then the fact that you can get old decorations or have a chance of getting old decorations is also really cool. But that's the only good stuff. And I don't think it's enough to redeem the, the cartel pack. Because it's just like, all this stuff is just random. Like, who cares about this exquisite champion's lightsaber? Bioware really needs to streamline the items you can get and, and give us a pool of really good items. Like, here we go. Look at this cartel pack right here. That supply pack toy regen will sell for like 50k, or sells for 50k on the GTN. This assault cannon sells for like 25k on the GTN. Like, what a waste of a pack opening. And the fact that now they're saying, oh no, we're not going to give you a grand chance cube worth 900k. We'll give you these crappy items kind of sucks. But here we go. Uh, the Starfighter Battle Camera is actually a really nice item. Uh, probably one of the better regens. It does sell for a few million on the GTN, so that's good. But, but really, the chances of getting a good item like that are rare. I don't mind getting it to this Tithe Font of Sacrifice. Give it to me as many times as, as you can, because that's a really nice decoration. Here we go. We got our third gold item, the t another Tithian Disciple Supplementary Body Armor. So we are still getting around three gold items per Hyper Crate, which is the average. But... Um, the fact that we're not getting Grand Chance Cubes, ugh, I'm, I really don't like that at all. Another tight font of Sacrifice, cool. So yeah, we got three Grand Chance Cubes out of this entire pack opening. So uh, I'll quickly run through my item stash here, pick out the stuff, and then we'll, um, we'll talk about it in a second. Alright, so we're back. I've picked out all the decorations and the fashion regen, and we'll check out these items and how they look. Um, 
Yeah, I was so it seems like we only actually got two Grand Chance Cubes, not three, which is just insane. Uh, if Bioware decides to keep these changes, which I highly doubt they will, because um, they can't. Like, there's so much outrage. Nobody loves this cartel pack. You'll check the Reddit forums and stuff. No one is happy with this. And the fact that you only got two Grand Chance Cubes, that's crazy. You're basically discontinuing Grand Chance Cubes. Um, and their price is going to skyrocket on the GTN. I mean, I'm not sure how much it'll affect it just with this one pack, but if Bioware keeps these changes and, the, and you're only averaging like two to five Grand Chance Cubes per Hyper Crate, yeah, they're, they're, the price will skyrocket and um, people who have hoarded their Grand Chance Cubes will make a huge profit. But um, I, I really highly doubt they, that they will keep it. Uh, okay, previewing these decorations, a lot of these are centerpieces. This Iocath Arch is a centerpiece, the Tights Font uh, of Sacrifice is a centerpiece, and then that Iocath Computer Bank is also a centerpiece. So that was kind of, I guess, the theme Bioware was going for with decorations out of this one. And uh, most of the decorations, 90% of them are really nice. Here, I'm going to preview this uh, light here. Uh, once again, I saw this image on Delphi. It didn't look particularly nice, and it doesn't look particularly nice here in-game either. Uh, it's just kind of one of those basic decorations. You can collect it for the prestige, of course, but it's not something you're really going to want to collect. So that one kind of sucks, but the other decorations are really nice. Um, that Iocath droid was okay as well. I personally prefer decorations if it's a personnel. I prefer it to be like moving or doing some cool thing. Like a lot, some of the Revenite decorations are really nice because the Revenite personnel, they're usually moving or they're, or they're doing some sort of dark prayer or something where they're glowing red. Um, and you can tell that those are really popular by how high they sell for on the GTN. But um, here, I guess we're going to have to run out to the outside because um, that's where the only centerpiece is available on, on Droman Kass. So yeah, definitely expect the prices of Grand Chance Cubes to go up on the GTN now. Uh, they're selling for around 800-900k, but obviously if Bioware keeps these changes, then they're going to go up to probably 1-1.5 million credits, maybe even higher. So we'll preview the Tithe's uh, Font of Sacrifice first. Oh wait, I, I, okay, so... Um, Wow, these are actually quite a few decorations that work on centerpieces here. Centerpiece decorations, in my opinion, are usually the nicest, but the, the, the problem with them is they only fit in so many areas. As you guys can see, it's not, no, not the tight font of sacrifice. We're going to be looking at the uh, Iocath decorations first. We'll save the best for last. Uh, we'll look at the Iocath arches first. Um, cool. It's nice. I mean, it's just big, I guess, <laughs> but um, I'm not sure how well that would work in really any stronghold. That's the thing about centerpieces, they, they only fit in so many contexts. Uh, it's hard to kind of make it work with the general theme of a stronghold, but it's, it's nice nonetheless. Uh, we'll check tight font of sacrifice now. Um, this one is the one that I'm really excited about, and I'll, I'll show you guys why I'm so excited. It's a really nice decoration. Check out how awesome that looks. Um, it's got such a cool rustic feel to it. You have these skulls and then the fire sticking out. It's really awesome. Um, definitely one of my favorites, and uh, the fact that it's silver means you can probably find some good deals on the GTN for it. So no need to buy this pack or anything to try to get it, just pick it up off the GTN. I mean, it's probably going to sell for under a million credits. Then surprisingly enough, we have two, uh, a few more um, centerpiece decorations. We have this Iocath Computer Bank. This is also probably one that's kind of worse than the other ones. I mean, it's just too basic, you know. Usually with decorations, you want it to be clickable, have some animation to it or something. Some of these decorations are just basic and um, they don't really do much. So obviously it is worth it to collect it for the prestige, but doesn't really serve a purpose other than that. Yeah, it doesn't seem like you can, it's clickable anywhere. And um, as you guys can see at the top there, we have that weird triangle or pentagon looking thing. They're really milking that. I mean, they put that in like every cartel pack some way or another. It's either a decoration or they gave it to us a companion recently. Um, yeah, so in terms of quality of items in the cartel pack, it, it's okay. Uh, the cartel pack itself, the Tithian Disciples armor set is, is good. Uh, a lot of this other stuff, like the, the pet is really cool. Uh, as you guys can see, it's got that really cool glowing animation, which is not something you see on pets. I think there's only like a handful of pets that, that have that cool animation. And then I'll show off the uh, mount as well, the Inferno Devourer, which is really nice. But those are old stuff you can pick up off the GTN for really affordable prices. Give it a week, give it maybe a week and a half, you can pick up a, or find a good deal on the GTN. Um, 
really if you're going to open a cartel pack it's going to be for hoping for a chance of getting the gold stuff and really the only good thing out of this pack is the volatile weapon tuning uh, that's really the only good thing and i guarantee you that will sell for extremely insane prices on the gtn i mean no one's really going to be offering good deals on that so that's probably the only reason you're going to want to open this cartel pack but the, obviously the chances of getting it are pretty low um Overall, I would say this cartel pack shit. I mean, excuse my language, but I'm just not happy with the fact that they took away Grand Chance Cube once again. I mean, how many times are they going to do that? I'm not sure. Um, it's really not worth it whatsoever. You just get a ton of crap. Uh, at least if you got 10 to 15 Grand Chance Cubes as you normally would have, you could have sold those for 800, 900k each, made about 10 to 15 million credits, and then you could have spent those credits and got your, gotten yourself an item that maybe you didn't get out of the cartel pack. Like, for example, spend those credits to try to get the uh, the volatile weapon tuning, and then there you go. You, you feel satisfied because you opened a cartel pack, you, might, you got a few other good gold items, and then you can complete an armor set or get the tuning or get whatever you wanted by selling those Grand Chance Cubes. But this way, Bioware is kind of forcing our hand, forcing us to open the Grand Chance Cubes and giving us a ton of crap um, in the meantime, which is really, uh, their, their goal was to make it that we had a more satisfying experience, but it's just completely the opposite. It's not satisfying whatsoever. Um, yeah, that's kind of that, that, that's kind of my take on it. It's, it's not worth it at all. So definitely stay away from this cartel pack. Uh, as you guys can see, I'm only opening one. Normally, I would open like two or three hyper crates uh, to really get a good sense of, um, make sure I get all the decorations previewed and to get a good sense of the RG and stuff. But this one is just one you definitely want to stay away from, which sucks because it does have some really nice items. The only issue is you're not going to be getting your money's worth. It's much more useful if you're going to pay the cartel coins to just buy the hyper crate, sell it on the GTN for like 30 to 40 million credits, and then use those credits to buy whatever items you wanted from the pack itself. That's going to be a lot more worth it than opening the cartel pack and hoping for something good because the chances of getting something good are not very high and just go check the reddit forums you'll see that the story correlates with everything with uh, ev what everybody else is saying like people have opened this and they've said we haven't gotten anything good and um yeah so hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh hope you guys found it informative really use this video as a deterrent do not waste your money on this cartel pack it's not worth it whatsoever and it kind of sucks because usually this is supposed to be exciting and you know we got a new cartel pack but really, sometimes Bioware just makes these changes that make absolutely no sense. If you're going to ask me, instead of, you know, you know, Soldier TV, like, what would you have suggested then? It was really simple, in my opinion. If you're going to do something like give us another extra item, what they should have done is uh, given us three items. One item is a new pack item. The second item is a guaranteed Grand Chance Cube. And then the third item could either be a Grand Chance Cube or an item drawn randomly from the cartel market. That way, we at least have a guaranteed Grand Chance Cube, which we can sell on GTN or if you want you can open it and try to hope for something good you're getting a new pack item and then the third item is, is kind of that extra thing that's going to make people feel happier because they're getting an extra item that would have been a cool change but what Bioware did was they forced us they didn't give us grand chance cubes they forced us to open it and get a bunch of crap and then the third item they, they didn't even give us a chance of getting a gold item the third item is just going to be either silver or bronze which sucks even more so anyways I hope you guys enjoyed the video that's enough of the rant Please let me know what you guys think in the comment section. If you did go ahead and open it, let me know if you guys got lucky. Hopefully you guys had better luck than I did. But um, in any case, hope you guys had a good one. See you guys in the next one.